The early years of independence and formation of Malaysia has been very challenging years. The Malayan emergency, followed by the confrontation, the second communist insurgency, and May 13, came one after another. I spent six years of my childhood in Baling Kedah, where the meeting between Tunku Abdul Rahman and Chimpeng took place in 1955. My late father was a police clerk and we were staying in government quarters. As such, anything happening in the area, be it good or bad, would be known to us. So the communists ambushed on security forces along Kroh Betong Road on 17 June 1968, resulting in 17 deaths came as a shock. Even though I was only 8 years old then, I could sense the tension around me at that time. That incident signified the start of the second communist insurgency. Then, on 3rd June 1970, government forces suffered another setback when four soldiers were killed in Kwa Ulu Kroh. So, at the start of the second communist insurgency, the government suffered several setbacks and was in need of some positive news. Good news finally came on 27th August 1970 when government forces managed to turn the table against the enemy in Tanah Hitam, Klian Intan. This was the first major success by the security forces since the start of the second insurgency. I remember people talking excitedly about the incident and Although I had no idea who they were at that time, I was very proud of them. 53 years later, I finally found one of the heroes of that significant incident. Thanks to Colonel Fabian Wong who introduced me to this quiet and humble hero, this video is about him. During younger days, uh, I stayed near very near the kampong in Cebu. Kampung? It's a uh, kampong, kampong, kampong dato. Our childhood is just behind the kampong, so we mix with uh, Malay friends in school as well, and then they talk so much about uh, joining the army. Just uh, less than less than three months, when we were uh, we were asked to uh, do operation in Greek in Perak for about a month plus. After that, I was uh, asked to go for Young Officers Tactic Course. In June 1970, I was the, the B Company was posted to six rangers from 3rd Battalion to 6th Battalion to, as a forming arm of a new company, 6th Battalion. So I was posted there. In uh, less than uh, two months, we were asked to go into the jungle. The information from the special branch that the communists might pass through, might pass, might pass through this area on the way to attack Greek police station during Hari Kemasaan. So then, the, my uh, com my ambush commander is uh, Major. Uh, Ismail Saleh. So with him, we have three platoons and he is in the HQ, HQ uh, uh, group. So we were given an area. I was given the area, say we call it area A. The others are B and C. So then we have to arrange such way. If it so happened, the communists pass by. How are we going to deal with it? So we so we erect, we plan such a way that we dig trenches up to uh, chest level to focus on the track that the communists might pass through. Okay. So we have two trenches facing the track. The other trenches are facing the other track and another and another. The area given to uh, the, that I am having is uh, something like a triangle. So that so every every triangle we have uh, uh, trenches dark, and the men are all there watching watching. But during the first few days, 
we only have uh, centuries posted out. It's about two to three hundred years, or even sometimes even more. Centuries will be out there listening, watching. So, by also we are doing it every day for the last four days. In the afternoon of 27th August 1970, it's about 3.45, the sentry heard sounds of footsteps where the twigs and the bamboo blacks. So he quickly withdraw and inform. So the the front liner where where the trenches are, they all stand by. So from there, the message pass around, we all stand by. So as the enemy comes into the killing zone, uh, the person in front under the charge of the corporal will start firing. First, they he use a claymore mine. The first time claymore mine used in Malaysia. After that, followed by machine gun with the with a uh, with a uh, two machine gun. The British one, the we call it GPMG, General Purpose Machine Gun. They are supported by the light machine gun. So then, the, after the firing for for ten minutes or so, we quiet down. The, en there is, uh, the enemy cannot return any fire, even though, even though the intelligent later on the intelligent report says what there were about forty to 60, 60 of the uh, uh, communist terrorists, but because they were on the lower ground, they did not counter attack, charge forward. For the simple reason is that all that area is very woody. While all this going on, the communist terrorists, they try to go around, bypass my area to another area. From there, they meet another a platoon. The, the front person, they said this uh, quite high-ranking uh, communist terrorist was shot dead. And they all withdraw again, cabut. And then they, they, after that, the Armed forces they, the, they call for artillery to deter the, the communists from uh, uh, escaping and so on. After that, we waited until the morning where the the the, the message come. Special branch say, don't touch anything because uh, we have a. Uh, Communist terrorists have been shot dead. Four of them in my area, one in the other area. He said, don't touch anything. So we waited for the office, special branch officer to, to come. And then we go through. Together with the, the men also follow him to where the body is. Go back to your... Yeah, we have, our, our, after everything being clear, then we move out. Move out to, to another area. Because uh, the period they were given is three months. They finish the three months and, we are, and then we oh, withdraw. There's no time to celebrate. <laughs> I start with the middle. Uh -huh. Middle is called PPA. PPA is Perhimatan Am. Pingat Perhimatan Am. Hmm. Alright. The one on the, on the right here, this one is, uh, the, we call it Pimak. Pingat Gagabrani, we call it PGB, PGB. Yeah. Mm. where there is a, the star there. Uh, this one, this, uh, at present we have uh, less than 50, 50 around now, as, as far as military is concerned. I, I got this one in 1971, June, I got and uh, I only received the medal 19, in 1975, also in Agong birthday. Then the last one is uh, that was given way back in 2000, 2009 or 2010. I got this one in Cebu, 2009, the last one. They call it PJM, Pingat Jasa Malaysia. 
in recognition of uh, those who are involved uh, from the period of uh, 19... I think they include 1948 to 1989 mm. as, uh, in Roscom as a civilian. Uh, what, what was the post for? Tenant, tenants Registration Officer. So what do you do? Uh, go to outstation especially to uh, register uh, new tenants in where they stay. Simply, simply is to prevent the communists from uh, going over there, uh, stay in the house, uh, asking for food and so on. Uh, because there is another form that they should feel whoever will stay overnight in the house, they have to feel according to their national registration card. You see? Whether they do it or not, we don't know. But if the special branch comes to know about it, then these tenants are in trouble. Later on, we, we uh, cover as a food denial or something. Also, we go to the outstation, small town, check the shop house where what, whoever they sold the food, they have to write down with the IC of the, the customer. Okay. That also prevent them from uh, cooperating with these uh, companies. Because if they do so, the special branch will know. How the special branch know? Sometimes through what I call it surrender of enemy personnel. When these people came out, they were they were interviewed by this uh, special branch officers and so on. Then began to leak out where they are during that time where they stay and so on, how they get their food. So how long did you serve on the uh, this post? After I served in the post by 1981. See, from 75 July to 1981 I was there. Then later I was there. I moved to another post as a cooperative officer with a regrouping resettlement area. Where, all the, where the, they regroup all the longhouses in this operation area, they move them there to prevent the communists from uh, having uh, easy food from these people. So from there, they from in that resettlement area, they have set up the cooperative department set up a cooperative store. We are there to help them. I know he was in the army, um, but I don't have have the military life with him, you know, mm. because we are not married yet. So at that time, you actually didn't think much about him being a soldier and facing all the bullets for the enemies and all that? No, not to that, that stage, lah. Mm. but we know that to serve as a, as a soldier for your country, mm. there is a risk there. Looking back to the years when he served as a ranger and getting a PGB and all that, how do you feel? The country acknowledged that he is a hero you know, for the country. Actually, he is the only uh, Sarawak Chinese that get awarded with PGB. To say that like, I'm proud of him uh, being awarded as uh, PGB, the hero of the country. Even my children, my grandchildren, they are also very proud of him.